Uh, welcome to our lesson on expanded electron configurations. Um, let's see where we've been. In regions chemistry, uh, when we talk about electron configurations, we uh, don't use this term, but we really are using what we would call a condensed configuration. Um, if I talk, for example, about sodium and I ask you to give me the ground state electron configuration of Na, you look at your reference table, and it says 281. Um, so I know the number of electrons in the first energy level, in the second principal energy level, and the third principal energy level. But then if I ask you, well, okay, tell me about the arrangement of the electrons in the second energy level, all you could say is, uh, there are eight of them. Well, what if we wanted to say more about where those electrons were, what the structure of them uh, are? Um, well, we would need something called an expanded configuration, or just a normal configuration. Uh, this is just a simplification. It's a good simplification, but we want to go a little bit more into depth about where the electrons are in the electron structure. And so it turns out, this won't make sense to you at this moment, but instead of 2, I say 1s2. Instead of 8, I say 2s2, 2p6. And instead of 1, I say 3s1. I will say this, just so it makes some sense, the superscript is the number of total electrons in each of the energy levels. First energy level 2, second energy level 8, third energy level 1. But the question is, how do I get this from that, so to speak? Well, in order to uh, be able to place electrons meaningfully in sublevels, I have to not only know what energy level has what sublevels, I need to know how many electrons are in each sublevel or rather the maximum number of electrons that each sublevel can hold. Um, the S sublevel can hold a total of two electrons. If I want to communicate that there are two electrons in an S sublevel, I write the letter S and I write a superscript 2. Of course, that's the maximum, so I could have S1 if there were only one electron. The P can hold a maximum of six electrons, so if I want to communicate that, that in my P sublevel, there are a total of six electrons. I write P6, of course, maybe there are only two electrons in my P sublevel, which are a P superscript 2. The D sublevel can hold a maximum of 10. Uh, again, so therefore, if there are for all 10, if there are 10 electrons, if my sublevel is full, I write with the T with the subscript of 10, Let's say it's only half filled, well in that case I would write D5. Now, on our level, we never get to the F, but just for the sake of completion, the F can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. So if, in the case I had 14 electrons, if I had a full F, I would write F14. Uh, a nice way of relating the energy levels to the, uh, the levels in which they're found, let me make sure I said that correctly, uh, to relate the sublevels to the energy levels in which they're found, is a little cheer that I do. I say, give me an S, S. Give me an SP, SP. Give me an SPD, SPD. Give me an SPDF, SPDF goes cyclones. My energy is a little, a little bit low because I'm talking to an empty room right now. And at that point, I just fill out, I fill in, I should say, uh, the sublevels into the remaining columns. Uh, this is just a way of remembering what sublevels are in each of the energy levels. So this is just a nice way of knowing that if you are in the first energy level, you only have S sublevels. If you're in the second energy level, you have S's and P's. If you're in the third energy level, there are S, P's and D's. If you're in the fourth energy level, you have S, P, D's and F's, and it continues the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh energy level. Of course, not all S's are the same. I need to communicate which energy level which S belongs to. So I just don't write S here. I say that's the 1S. Uh, since these energy levels, sublevels, are in the second energy level, I call this the 2S and that the 2P. In the third energy level, I have the 3S, the 3P, and the 3D. In the fourth energy level, I have the 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. And I keep going with that. But I will tell you, on our level of chemistry, we don't go belong, 
below. I don't go beyond the 5s. So this is the end of the line for filling of the electron. Now, let me take a step back. Um, students before coming to this lesson knew the following, that the first energy level is lower en in energy than the second energy level. The second energy level is lower in energy than the third energy level. Now, that also follows for the sublevels. Now, of course, we know that it's not just the one, uh, the first energy level. It turns out the first energy level is the 1s energy level. The first energy level only has the one sublevel. Uh, the second energy level actually has, as we can see, two sublevels. I have the 2s sublevel, and I also have the 2p sublevel. Actually, 2s and 2p. The third energy level, well, has the 3s, the 3p, and the 3d. The s, p, and 3d. Now, if uh, this were the case, it would be always very easy to know the order in which these energy levels fill. Uh, if we imagine that when we, uh, let's say we have 16 electrons in an atom, uh, and I want to show the electronic structure of that atom. I start, I imagine that I start building up the electron structure from scratch. I start by placing electrons in the first energy level, and once that's filled, I go to the second energy level, and once that's filled, I go to the third, and so on, and so on, and so on. So the general order is this, of course, first I fill the 1s, and then I fill the 2s, and then the 2p, and then the 3s, and the 3p. Now, up to that point, everything is hunky-dory, everything's wonderful. Uh, but beyond that, we start getting into some problems. Um, it was worked out in the 1920s and 30s, something called the Alfau principle, which is just what, I, uh, am I, what, I'm, do, what I'm sketching here. Alfau is German for building up. And the scheme that I gave is pretty good, but there are some exceptions, uh, which, I'll, um, which I'll mention. This is a trick, by the way, what I'm about to show you. It's, it doesn't show the, all about the reality of electrons in their shells and the resulting energies, but it's good enough for our purposes. Now, before I show you the method, the trick, as I mentioned, that works generally very, very well for us, I, I want to write in the number of electrons again that I can fill maximally. Remember, I can place a total of two electrons in the first ship, the 1s. Uh, I can place two in the 2s, two in the 3s, two in the 4s, and two in the 5s. That's the maximum. Uh, as for the p's, I can place six in the 2p, six in the 3p, six in the 4p. We're not going to get there, but the six in the 5p. The d's, can hold a total of 10, 10, 10, 10. The S could hold 14, although we're never going to get anywhere near those. Uh, when I start filling, as I said, I start uh, at, the, at the base, in the first energy level, so with the S. Now, when I do this, uh, I'm going to do this, let me use green. I write diagonal paths like this. So what I say is this. I start off by placing electrons in the 1S energy level. If I, if I have more than two electrons, then I continue. I start a next diagonal going like this, which takes me through the 2s. So I start off by filling up the 1s with two electrons. If I go further, then I go to the 2s, and I can place a total of two electrons there. If I have more electrons to place, I continue by going through the 2p. If I place all six electrons and I have more electrons, then I go to the 3s, where I can deposit two electrons. From that point, I return to my base, and I go to the 3p, like so. I can put a total of six electrons there. Ah, now you see the problem I mentioned before. If you notice, I am not going to the 3d, not directly. I first have to fill the 4s, because it turns out, for reasons that we don't go into, even though it's part of the next energy level, the 4s turns out to be lower in energy, slightly lower in energy than the 3D, so it gets filled first. So I place two electrons in the 4S, and if I have more, then I go and I fill the 3D. And I place 10 electrons there. If I have more than that, 
I then go to the for p. And if I use up all six, if I have six electrons and then more, then I continue on to the 5s. Remember, uh, we're never going to go any further than, than this. Actually, what I've done uh, is I've essentially done the example that I wanted to do, and that's doing rubidium. Let me, let me clean this up, and uh, we'll go through this again and show you why this is essentially rubidium's electron configuration. Okay, I've recreated my triangle. Uh, sorry, no cheering. No time. Um, I have 37 electrons to place. Remember, if I have a neutral atom of rubidium, I have a total of 37 electrons to place. So I start off here with my arrow, and I first go through the 1s. Um, I can put a total of two electrons in the 1s. So I'm just going to show the accounting. If I use two electrons there, I have 35 left. I now go to the 2s. I can place two electrons there, leaving me with 33 left to place. I now continue on with the 2p. And I know that I can place a max of six electrons there, leaving me with 27 to place. I continue on then with the 4s, so I have 27 left to place. I can put two of the electrons here. 27 minus 2 is 25. Um, I now move on to the 3p. Uh, 3p can hold a total of 6. Well, 25 minus 6 is 19. I have 19 left to place. Now I go to the 4s. I can put two electrons there. Uh, minus 2, leaving me with 17. Okay, ah, at this point, now I continue on and I go through the 3d. The 3d can hold a total of 10 electrons. Oh, that takes a lot of electrons, leaving me with only 7 to place. Now I continue with the higher energy level 4p. The 4p can hold a maximum of 6. Uh, minus 6 leaves me with 1. Oh, I have one left electron to place. So that's going to be 5s1. Not 2. 2 would be the max. I only have one left, so now I am done. And this is my final answer. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s1. Now, as I said, that's only a trick, a very good trick. And all tricks, all little rules like that, have exceptions. Because we only go up to atomic number 37, by the way, that's the Zeph number of 37, we're only going to uh, uh, encounter two, um, two exceptions. One is with chromium. Now, if we go through our rule, this is what we get. 1s2, 2s2, and so on. Now, it's almost perfect. In fact, the order is great. It's still 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now, here you have to be careful. It is 4s and then 3d. But it turns out that it's 4s1 and 3d5 for the reason I'm going to write right now. An outer D with five electrons is half-filled, thus more stable. Therefore, this is slightly more stable than this is, and therefore it's preferential. So you would need to be sure to rewrite this as this for full credit. There's one other uh, exception. Copper is a similar situation. Again, the predicted configuration is almost perfect. The first five sublevels are uh, great. The order is correct in the last two sublevels, except just as before, one of those two electrons is going to make the uh, transition to the outermost D, Y, for a similar reason as before. An outer D with 10 electrons is full, thus it's more stable. Uh, so notice, since I can arrive at a full D, this is the preferential. So if you are writing your configuration, uh, by all means, write it out, but be sure to make this small change at the end for full credit. Well, my friends, uh, that's the first side. Orbital notation I'll take up in a sec separate lecture. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, take care.